Every time Sony releases a new official firmware for the PlayStation 3, the wonderful folks over at PS3 Exploit come up with a new solution for us to get PS3 Hen up and running. I'm about to teach you how to install PS3 Hen on your own system, whether it be fat, slim, or super slim. Fire up your PS3 and your PC and grab a USB stick formatted in FAT32. We're about to add some special new powers to your favorite console. Before you get started, make sure that your PS3 is connected either to the wired or wireless internet. I'm using a PS3 Super Slim for this example. Let's check some key settings before moving forward. From the cross media bar on your PS3, slide to the right to settings. Then scroll down five times with the D-pad to get to system settings and select it with the X button. Since we're installing hybrid firmware in PS3 HEN on your system, you definitely don't want it to automatically update to the newest official firmware. Select Automatic Update with X, move the highlight to off with the D-pad, and select it with the X button. Next step, let's get rid of that What's New message that pops up every time you boot up your PS3. Scroll down through System Settings to display What's New and select it with X. Then use the D-pad to change this setting to off and select off with the X button. You probably already know that you're on official firmware version 4.89, but let's just double check. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, up one, and select System Information with the X button. Once you've confirmed your official firmware version number, press the circle button to go back one level in the menu. Just leave your PS3 sitting right here and transition over to your computer. You'll need to access the ps3exploit.com site twice, once from your PC and once from your PS3. I've got it linked for you in the video description. Scroll down on the page until you see the listing in text format for the latest version of the hybrid firmware and click on it. This takes you to the PSX Place website which has a listing where you can download hybrid firmware from several different mirrors. Scroll down on the page until you see the listing for the links for the three mirrors that are available. In this case, I'm just going to use mirror number one, which is Mediafire. Select the mirror of your choice and click on it. And if you chose mirror number one for Mediafire, well, all you have to do is click the big download button to grab the hybrid firmware and download it to your computer. Once you download the hybrid firmware zip file, you'll need to extract this file in your downloads folder. You can go ahead and extract the file into the path that's pre-selected inside the Extract All function. Once you have this file extracted, delete it out of the Downloads folder to eliminate clutter. Navigate into the folder that you just uncompressed by double-clicking on it. Before you do anything else, insert a USB drive formatted in FAT32 format into your computer. The hybrid firmware file needs to live in a specific path on your USB drive. Create a new folder right on the root of the USB drive and call it PS3. Once you have this folder created and named, double-click into it. Inside this folder, you'll need to create another folder. This time, name the new folder update UPDATE in all caps. Now double-click into the newly created update folder on your USB drive. Inside this folder is where you'll need to copy over the hybrid firmware. That file is called ps3updat.pup and it's in your downloads folder. Simply drag and drop that file directly into the PS3 slash update folder on your USB drive. You're done with your PC at this point. You can close out any instances of File Explorer, remove the USB drive from your PC, and insert it into the rightmost USB port on your PlayStation 3. When we last left your PlayStation 3, it was sitting on system information. From here, you can go ahead and install the hybrid firmware just like you would any other system update. Scroll up to the top of System Settings and select System Update with the X button. Scroll down in the list of choices to update via storage media and select it with X. You'll get a message from the PlayStation 3 saying that you're about to install the same software version that's already on it, except in this case it's hybrid firmware. Use the D-pad to scroll the highlight over to Yes and select Yes with the X button to continue. From here it's just like any other official system software update. Just follow the prompts on screen, wait till the two bars get to 100%, and allow your PlayStation 3 to restart. The next step in the process requires that you use the internet browser on your PlayStation 3. Let's go through some key settings that you need to check before proceeding. Go ahead and launch the internet browser by selecting it with the X button. From here, press the triangle button to pull up the side cart menu. Use the D-pad to move the highlight to the section called Tools and select it with X. From the list of choices, use the D-pad to scroll the highlighter down to Confirm Browser Close and select it with the X button. Use the D-pad to move the highlight to the selection for off and select off with the X button. Press the triangle button again to open the side cart menu. Once again, use the D-pad to go up to tools and select it with X. 
Use the D-pad to move the highlighter down to the section titled Home Page and select Home Page with the X button. From the list of choices presented on screen, use the D-pad to scroll down to Use Blank Page and select it with the X button. Then use the D-pad to scroll the highlight down to OK and select OK with the X button to save this change. There are four sets of things that need to be cleaned out or deleted from inside your web browser. Press the triangle button, go up to Tools, and select it with X. From the list of menu choices, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to Delete Cookies and select it with the X button. At the confirmation prompt that appears, use the D-pad to scroll the highlight over to Yes and select it with X. Once again, press the triangle button to open up the side cart menu. Use the D-pad to move up to Tools and select it with X. Use the D-pad to move the highlighter down underneath Delete Cookies to delete search history and select it with the X button. At the confirmation prompt, use the D-pad to slide the highlight to Yes and select it with the X button. For time number three, once again, press the triangle button to open the side cart menu. Scroll up to Tools and select it with the X button. This time, use the D-pad to scroll the highlight down beneath Delete Search History to Delete Cache and select it with the X button. And at the confirmation prompt, use the D-pad to scroll the highlight left to Yes and select it with the X button. One more to go. Press the triangle button to pull up the side cart menu, scroll up to Tools and select it with X. This time, scroll down beneath Delete Cache and scroll down to Delete Authentication Information and select it with the X button. And again at the confirmation prompt, press left on the D-pad and select Yes with the X button. Now that is one squeaky clean browser and we're about to put it to good use. Press the Start button on your controller to access the on-screen keyboard. Use the Square button on your controller to backspace over the existing web address inside the virtual keyboard. Then type in ps3exploit.com with no E and press the Start button on the controller to access the website. You'll be using this website more than once, so it makes sense to bookmark it. Press the Select button to pull up the Bookmarks menu, then select Add to Bookmarks with the X button. Then select the title of the bookmark with the X button to save it to your bookmarks. Use the left analog stick on the controller to move up to PS3 HEN in the top navigation ribbon. Then use the left analog stick to move the arrow down to PS3 Installer Enabler and select it with the X button to continue. The website will provide an expected download to your PlayStation 3 and once it's done you'll get a confirmation prompt. Select the circle button to continue. The website should move the pointer down to a button that says Initialize HEN Installer. Select this button with the X button to continue. The website will give you a progress indicator in percentage format to show you where you're at in the process. All right, I want to show this to you because it happens so often that I would consider it an expected behavior. More often than not, you're going to see a failed message the first time that you run the initialization process. Don't sweat it. Here's what you do. Press the triangle button to pull up the side cart menu. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to refresh and select refresh with the X button. The website will give you the option to either re-download the same file or just skip the process. It makes no difference which one you pick. In this case, I just elected to re-download the same file. Once you've completed this process, press the circle button to go back to the web browser. Just like before, the pointer should land on Initialize HEN Installer. Use the X button on the controller to select this button on the screen to initialize the installer. You may have to repeat this process one or more times for it to work successfully. Once your system accepts the exploit, you'll see a message that says HEN Installer Initialize Successfully. Use the left analog stick or the D-pad to move the pointer down to Install HEN and select it with the X button. When the website starts the HEN installation process, you'll get a pop-up message asking about JavaScript closing the website. This is an expected behavior. Simply select Yes with the X button to continue. Once you're back at the PS3 exploit main page, press the circle button to go back to the cross media bar on your PlayStation 3. HEN will now automatically take over two install processes. Don't interrupt either of these two processes. Let both of them go completely through to the end point. When you reach the end of the first install process, press the circle button to go back to the cross media bar. The second installation process will begin automatically. Once you see the install complete message on screen, press the circle button to go back to the cross media bar. Press and hold the PlayStation button on your controller and select turn off the system with the X button. You'll need to restart your PS3 in order for the changes to take effect. Slide over to Yes and select Yes with the X button to power off. Power your PlayStation 3 back on. It should land right on Enable HEN in the cross media bar. Select Enable HEN with the X button to launch it for the first time. Just like with the initialization of the installer, you may have to run HEN more than once to get it to run correctly. 
Once again, this is an expected behavior. If the hen launcher crashes like it did in this case, simply reboot your PlayStation 3. Once you're back at the cross media bar, you should land right back on enable hen once again. Select it with the X button to relaunch hen. When hen is launched and initializes correctly, you'll see a notification pop up in the top right corner of the screen. Now that you've got hen up and running on your PlayStation 3, there is one more thing that you need. And if you overlook this, you're really missing out on the true power of PS3 hen on your system in the first place. Check out this video shown on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description to learn how to install Multiman on your PS3. Your system will thank you for it.